hello friends once again welcome you to my channel so in this video we are going to see actually what we will do we will once again revise whatever we have done in our last video the summary kind of thing we will see and then we will proceed with a numerical so we have seen that subroutine whenever we are calling a function that time we may have to pass many parameters where registers will not be helpful to us because the number of general purpose registers are limited that time what we uh, need to do we have to use stack to pass the parameters as well as on the stack we are going to get back the return value from the function so that we have seen in the last video what i want to tell is see the basic steps whenever i am using this mechanism before calling a function whatever parameters you need to pass that you first push onto the stack so this instruction is for pushing parameter onto the stack. Uh, pushing means what? Stack pointer will be first decremented. At that decremented address, the value will be transferred, right? Means the value will be sent. So first we have here, for this example, the example we have taken, this was the base address of my array that I'm supposed to add using the function. And so see this uh, one push operation uh, is done, then another parameter, like this, whatever number of parameters you want to pass, you can do that. After passing all the parameters on the stack, next uh, part is calling the function. So whenever we will call a function, that time implicit push operation takes place. What it does, it will uh, push the return address on the stack. So if it is 1008 is this address, then next instruction address will be 1012. Here we have assumed instructions are taking 4 bytes. And the machine is byte addressable. So 1012 is my return address will be pushed onto the stack. And uh, your PC will be loaded with the address of this list add function. So control will go there. Then function will start. Now another big uh, point was that whenever we are using a function, that time if you are using any global resources like your registers, then those registers first need to be stored on the stack. Otherwise, the changes made by the function will be reflected in the caller, whereas caller will see them as a different values. So due to that, if we are using any registers, then in the very beginning, the very first line, instruction of my function will be uh, transfer the content on the stack. Whatever you have got, you just put it on the stack. So R0, R1, R2 will be pushed onto the stack. After that, you extract your parameters. Your parameters are 3000 and your 10. These two are my parameters. So those I need to extract into my variables or into my uh, registers, whatever I'm using, then we can proceed with the um, that calculations part. So move 16 SP comma R1 because after doing this push operation, SP will be at 1980. So from that, your this parameter, that counter is at distance one, and, is at location 1996. So they are 16 offset apart. So 16 SP. SP will not be changed. SP will be used as, as a one of the operand for addition process with 16. One new address will be generated. At that address, whatever is there, that is transferred to R1. This is index addressing mode used for accessing or retrieving, extracting the parameters in the function. Another parameter is at distance 20 from 1980. So uh, we have got it in R2. The next part is calculation part that already you have understood and all. After doing this calculation, simply do not return back. Because see here, these registers are there. But you know, whenever the return instruction is executed, that time top stack content will go to PC. So here, no, we should not do that return. First, what I will do after my operations are over, I will push the return value on the stack. So where should I push the value? It should be somewhere below the return address where it is stored. So I can store at this place or this place because these at these places we have taken what? At these places we have our this one parameters. So parameter values copies are there in the fun calling function also. So at any one of these two locations we can uh, transfer the return value. So 20 SP, that means at 2000 location, the summation result will be post by the function. And then 
whatever push operation we have done while entering the function, we will do the pop operation in the reverse order. So first, see if we have pushed R0 first, then R1, then R2, then first we'll pop R2, then R1, then R0. So we have done it this month here by, by using this single instruction. Pop operation increments the step pointer. You can see that. So this was another summary. After this, you can execute your return instruction. So when you execute return instruction, this value will be popped into the processor register PC. So this will be taken into PC. Now you will come back at 1012. After coming from function, you are interested in your return value. Where is your return value in the stack here? And where is your SP at 1996? From this distance, at how much distance your return value is there? At distance 4. You could have stored it here also. There is no harm in that. Just need to remember return values are stored just below your return address. Right? So here 4 SP will give me the my value that I will give to my variable sum. And see, this part will complete our function calling and all whatever we require from the function, everything is done. When we have started with function, that time our stack was at this location. Sorry. Our stack was at this location, right? So after completion of this particular uh, program, uh, your stack should be again come back to this position because your uses with function and all everything is done with. So what we will do, we will release this space. Means uh, now what I will do from uh, SP was at 1996. From there, I will make it to 2004. By doing that, what we are doing, we are releasing the space used by the function, right, by the function call. So this, when SP will come here, these two locations are, will not be there anymore, right? Then any stack operation will start from 2004. If it is pop, we'll do it from here. If it is push, we will start from here. So once your function is over, you should take back your stack to its original state so because of that this line is done this instruction is executed so hope you have understood i have summarized once again so so see first pass the parameters then call the function then in the function global resources need to be stored on the stack then take your extract your parameters do the job store the return value in the stack somewhere below your return address after that you do the pop operation because you have done some push operation while entering. So while exiting, you should do the pop. That will take back the values into the original values into their registers. And then you return from the function. After returning from the function, take the return value in the main or in the caller. And after that, you release the stack space, whatever you have used while calling the function. So this is the overall summary of this. Then next, I will do one numerical. So see. Register R1 is used in a program to point to the top of a stack, right? Means it is similar to my SP. Assume that each stack uh, word consumes four bytes and the machine is byte addressable, right? Write a sequence of instruction using index, auto increment, auto decrement addressing mode to perform each of the following tasks. First task they have given is pop the two items off the stack, add them, and then push the result onto the stack, right? So first you need to do pop operation, right? So uh, this one will do the second question and third is there. So first we'll solve the first one. So to pop, whenever you are doing a pop operation, stack pointer will be incremented or decremented. It will be post decrement, incremented, right? So see, move R1 plus comma R5. So R1 was my stack pointer. So the uh, whatever is pointed by S means R1 is taken into R5, one register. Then I'm adding the next element from the stack with R5. That means two top elements are popped, right? Then what I will do, move R5, uh, move R5, comma minus R1. That means the result will be stored back onto the stack. This is done. Next one is copy, copy the fourth item from top into register R4. They are talking about fourth item. So one element will take how much? Four bytes. That means four location. So fourth item will be located at how much offset from the top of the stack? Four into four. That is 16 offset, right? From the top. So what you need to do? Copy, right? So what you will write? Move 16 R1 comma R2. Yes or no? 16 R1. 
Why 60? Because fourth item. So fourth item will be, see, if you see your stack, right? I'll just show you. Right now, suppose you are at the top, right? This is suppose location 2000. Then this location will be 2004, right? 2004, this is 2008, this is 2012, right? And this is 2016. So from here, fourth item, first, second, third, fourth. So these items address is what? 2016. And you are at top. Top means 2000. So how far you are located? 16. So R1 is right now having this address. With that, you add 16. You will get the fourth item from the top. That item value you are moving to R2. So this part is clear. Now another one is given that uh, remove the top five items from the stack. Remove the top five items. So one, two, three, four, five. So just now we have seen how to release stack space. See, suppose this five element space I need to just release. I don't want to take the value somewhere. Just simply I want to release that space. Then what I can do? My R1 is at 2000. I need to take it to this position. Then these all these element space will be released or those items will be removed from the stack. So what I will do? Add has 20 comma R1. Where from 20 is coming? 5 element into size of each element. 5 into 4 is 20. So see, add has 20 comma R1. So this was an interesting numerical. So see, to do this numerical, whatever we have learned in our previous example, that is becoming helpful to us. So in this video, we'll be discussing up to here only. And by this video, we are completing this chapter, that instruction said, addressing mode, stack, subroutine, uh, then the instruction format, everything we have covered in this uh, chapter. Then next, I'll be starting with the new chapter that is control unit. So till then, thank you. And if you're like, uh, if you're getting from my explanations, then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.